Welcome you all this evening to our triumph broadcast of other night covenant Christian Center. Today is Wednesday, 27th day of May, year 2020. And I will give you a word that the Lord has laid upon my heart. I'm entitled it the unknown soldier. The unknown soldier. Let's share a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We worship you. We exalt you. We lift you. We glorify your name. We give you praise. We give you worship. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We thank you, Father, for life. We thank you, Father, for well being. We thank you, Father, for preservation. We thank you, Father, for provision. Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for your spirit. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for your blood that speaks better things. Speak to us this evening, Father, from your word. Grant us understanding. Now, this we done with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. From east to west, the air is no other God. From north to south, I say there is no other, there is no other God. From east to west, there is no other king. From north to south, I say there is no other, there is no other God. From east to west. There is no other God from north to south. I say there is no other God. So, like I said earlier, on, the topic of the sermon is the unknown soldier. For most people, you have heard or seen the statute of the unknown soldier, and it's simply uh, when soldiers go to war, some of them die and are recognized. Some of them die and not and are not recognized. Some of them come back from war or from battle and they are recognized, given all kinds of uh, medals for bravery and all of that. But there is a certain group that uh, die in battle and uh, their identity cannot be verified. Maybe the way and the manner in which uh, the bodies were mutilated, it becomes difficult for them to be identified that this body belongs to this particular person. And so they give them a mass burial, and that's really the idea behind the unknown soldier. So when you see the status of the unknown soldier, so that's the topic of my sermon this evening. Acts 19, verses 13 to 18. Acts chapter 19, verses 13 to 18. Then certain of the vagabond Jews' exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one skiver, a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was lit on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed uh, their deeds. So, we have uh, this scenario that played out here now. And uh, these uh, seven sons of this uh, chief priest, we are trying to emulate or to copy Paul the Apostle. And they tried to repeat the same thing that they had seen some of the believers do. And then the evil spirit began to speak and he said, I know Jesus Christ whom Paul preaches. I know Paul who preaches Jesus Christ. He says, you are known to me. You are known uh, to me. And it's the same way with uh, many people. They are just like the unknown soldier. They are just uh, like the unknown soldier. Genesis 12. Genesis 12. My prayer is that God will bring each and every one of us out of obscurity in Jesus' mighty name, that Jehovah will cause us to be known that we no longer dwell in anonymity or obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Genesis 12, verses 1 to 5. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. 
And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and he sold that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and to the land of Canaan they came. So Abraham was living in uh, all the Chaldees up till this moment in time. And up to that time, Abraham was not known. It was only the members of his family or his father's household that knew Abraham. And uh, where I just read now in Genesis uh, 12, verses 1 to 5, God said something very, very instructive to him. He said, I will make thy name great. I will bring you out of obscurity. You will no longer be anonymous. I pray for all those who are listening this evening that God will bring you out of obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You no longer live a life of anonymity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will make your name great. The Lord ministered to me some years ago because I asked him, I said, why did you say that you make Abraham's name great rather than making Abraham great? Because there's a distinction between that. There's a distinction between I'll make you great and I'll make your name great. And the Lord said to me, he said, when I make a person's name great, I've already made that person great. He says there are places that a person will never get to physically. There are people that will never come into contact with you physically. There are people that will never see you physically. There are people that will never be around you physically. But if your name is made great, they will hear of your name. So you can be in Nigeria, you can be in Lagos, and people in New Zealand, people in Australia, people in North America, people in South America have heard of your name. I pray for you this evening that the Lord will make your name great in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we are talking about Abraham Hopti today. There's none of us living that has ever come across Abraham, but we try to associate with the blessings of God upon the life of Abraham because God made a commitment to make his name great. So there was a divine commitment to make his name great. There was a divine commitment that Abraham will no longer live the life of an unknown person, that Abraham will no longer live in obscurity. He said, I will bring you out of obscurity. I will take you to a place where I will make your name great. He was saying to Abraham, I will not permit you to die in obscurity. I declare and I speak concerning everyone listening this evening that you will not die in obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The great purpose of God for your life, the very essence and the reason why God created you and brought you into this world, you will fulfill purpose, you will fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will make thy name great. And one of the things that God did in the course of his work with Abraham was to change the name of Abraham. He changed the name of Abraham. Genesis 17. Verses 4 to 5. Genesis 17, verses 4 to 5. So, for God to make his name great, he needed to bring him out of the name he was bearing before and give him another name. Genesis 17, verses 4 to 5. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. But thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So there was a transition from Abraham to Abraham. And in verse 15 to 16 of the same Genesis 17, 15 to 16. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So you can see the transformation come out of your, 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 your hometown or your country. I will take you to a place, and it is when I get you to that place that you will enter into greatness. I pray for everyone listening this evening. The greatness that God has reserved for you will manifest quickly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That great name that God has reserved for you, that greatness, that fame that God has reserved for you, it will show forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, part of what God had to do was to, as it were, uh, recycle their name or give them a new name. You know, in the course of my association with people, I've come across all kinds of uh, names. I remember some years back, some people were telling me about their family name, their surname, because they had decided to change the name. So I asked them, why were you changing the name? And they said, oh, the, the meaning of the name means uh, mud. 
you know, in the maybe in uh, Yoruba or whatever, it's something like uh, poto poto, you know, more. And I said, ah, how does a person wake up and give him or herself that kind of name, you know, mod, mod. And uh, another one, he also was changing his name. So I said, oh, why were you changing your name? I was in, in, uh, uh, interested to know why he was changing his name. And he said, oh, his name means uh, there's still one more suffering that you must suffer before you make it. There's still one more suffering. <laughs> And I said, what kind of name is that? You know, that there's, before you make it in life, there's still one more suffering that is reserved for you to suffer. I declare and I speak concerning your life. Any man, any woman, any power that has spoken concerning your life, that there's still one more suffering that you must suffer before you make it in life. I nullify, I cancel that suffering now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, I haven't suffered. So God will establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. The time of suffering in your life has come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the time for God to establish you. This is the time for God to strengthen you. This is the time for God to settle you financially and materially, maritally, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No more suffering in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has sent Jesus Christ to suffer on your behalf. No man, no woman can append or attach suffering to your life, to your journey in life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every water, every negative word, every word by any man, whether it be an agent of darkness, even an apostle of God that has spoken suffering to your life. I nullify that cause, that hurts, that jinx now in the mighty name of Jesus. Right? I break that word of suffering in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Right? You no longer suffer in Jesus' mighty name. Genesis 11 verses 26 to 32. Still talking about Abraham. Genesis 11 verses 26 to 32. Just look at the family of Abraham. And Sarah lived, and Terah, and Terah lived 70 years and begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lord. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in all the Chaldees. And Abraham and Nahor took their wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, and the name and the, of Milcah the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishtar. But Sarai was barren; she had no child. And Terah took Abraham his son, and Lord the son of Haran, his, fa his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from. All the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came into Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now, when we look at where I just read now, so many persons are mentioned in those verses of scripture. So many, a couple of people are mentioned in those uh, verses of scripture. If I were to ask many of us now, how many names do you recognize? So how many names are you familiar with? Maybe Abraham, Lord, Sarah. Maybe for some people, they might even be familiar with the name of Terah, the father of Abraham. But all those other names that are mentioned in this uh, 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 scripture verses, a lot of people are unfamiliar with them. And that is the story of the unknown soldier. A man's name, a woman's name might be recorded in the Bible. A person's name might be recorded in Scripture. But that man or that woman might still be unknown. So, the fact that your name is written in Scripture, the fact that your name is mentioned in the Bible, does not mean that you are known or you are famous. I declare and I speak concerning your life now, this evening, that God will bring you into fame in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will bring you out of obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer be referred to as an unknown soldier in Jesus' mighty name. So, when we look at the, the, the family of Abraham, the siblings of Abraham, many of us don't know their names, their we are not even bothered about it. it does not concern us and that's the way so many majority of people that come into this world live a life of anonymity a life of being unknown god will bring you out of that kind of situation in the mighty name of jesus christ i said god will bring you out of that kind of situation in jesus mighty name let's go again to genesis 25 still looking at the family of abraham genesis uh, 
25. I'll read verses 1 to 8. Genesis chapter 25, verses 1 to 8. Then again Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah, and she gave him Zimram, and Jokshan, and Midan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua, and Jokshan begat Sheba, and Didan, and the sons of Didan were Ashurim, and Letushim, and Lehumi, and the sons of Midian, Epha, and Epha, and Anok, and Abida, and Elda, and all these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, God, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived an hundred three score and uh, fifteen years, one hundred and seventy five years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. So, this is the story of the life of Abraham. Sarah passed on and he married a, a new wife called Keturah. But the Bible also says that he didn't just marry Keturah, he married other concubines. But the names of those concubines are not listed. Abraham married them, but the Bible does not list their name. Then the Bible goes on to begin to talk about the children that Keturah had. And he mentioned them one by one, and even their own children. How many of us even know the name of Keturah? Talk less of the children of Keturah, or the children that uh, Keturah's children had. We are familiar with Ishmael, we are familiar with Isaac. In fact, a lot of people will think that Ishmael and Isaac were the only children that Abraham had. But the Bible says here now that he had other children. So all these other children now, even though they were the children of Abraham, the friend of God, even though they were the children of Abraham, the father of faith, they are unknown. They are known to many people. I've come across people who bear the name Isaac. I've come across people who even bear the name Ishmael for those who are Muslims. But I can't recall coming across anybody that bears any of these names that are listed here now. And that's what happens when a man is like an unknown soldier. Nobody we associate with an unknown soldier. Uh, 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 you see people uh, have children and they name their children Enoch. And that Enoch is not because of the Enoch inside the Bible. It's because of the Enoch that is uh, in this present times, in this contemporary time. So they name their children Enoch, not because of the biblical Enoch, but because of the Enoch that we are seeing God work with in these contemporary times now. I've seen people, uh, somebody that I know, uh, that had daughters and then finally they had a son and uh, they called the son Daniel. And they didn't call the son Daniel because there's a Daniel inside the Bible. No, they call the son Daniel after the name of the head of the church that they go to. And so they wanted to honor that man. They felt that man had done something in helping, as it were, to bring that child into their life. So they gave that child the name Daniel. Not because there's a Daniel inside the Bible, no. But because they can see a Daniel right in front of them that God is working with. I declare and I speak concerning your life. God will bring you out of obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will begin to announce you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. David was living a life of anonymity, a life of obscurity. Nobody knew him. He was just tending his uh, father's sheep. But God knew him in heaven. And God had decided that he was going to announce him. I declare that speak concerning your life. There is a divine announcement over your life, over the work of your hands, your business, your finances, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That dream, that vision that you are pursuing, God will announce it now divinely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The angels of advertisement, the angels of publicity will begin to work with you, work with your business, work with that dream, that vision to bring you to fulfillment, to announce it to, entire, to the entire world 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That business will go worldwide in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That ministry will go worldwide in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That vision, that dream will go worldwide in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The angels that blow trumpet over the life of a person to announce him to the whole world, they will begin to sound that trumpet over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Their trumpet will begin to announce the work of your hands, your business, your finances in Jesus' mighty name. David was only known in his father's house and uh, by God in heaven. And then God took a decision. He said, now is the time to announce David. Now is the time to announce you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And he brought David to the battlefield to come and announce him. When David came to the battlefield where Goliath was, nobody knew him. And he kept on going from one person to the other. What did the king promise the person that can defeat this giant? What did the king promise the person that can defeat this giant? And even his own elder sibling was saying to him, you are a mischievous and not a small boy. You think that this place is a, a, a field house or a movie house. He says, we are here to fight. And David said, he said, God has given me victory hit at all. Nobody knew about my testimony when I fought the lion and the bear. And the God that, and that gave me victory over the lion and the bear is going to give me over, give me victory over this giant and announce. And that's what exactly happened. At the end of it all, the Bible says, the women we are singing in 1 Samuel 18, 6 to 9. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 6 to 9. And the women we are singing praises to Saul and David. And they said, Saul has killed this number of people. And this is the number of people that David had killed. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 6 to 7. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all the cities. So, out God announced him in one day to the entire nation. Out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King David with tablets, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul had slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. So in one day, God announced David, God announced David to, to the entire nation of Israel. And not only that he announced David to the entire nation of Israel, the popularity, the publicity, the advertisement that God gave to David. The Bible says now that the women recorded it as ten times that of Saul. And Saul became envious and jealous. You might be somewhere this evening now. Nobody knows you. And the Declaring to you this evening, your time is coming. Nobody knew Obededon. But when the Ark of the Covenant resided in his house for three months, the whole of Israel heard that God has blessed him. God is going to bless you in such a way and manner with the whole of Nigeria will know that God has passed through your house in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is not constrained by any pandemic. God is not constrained by any COVID-19. When God spoke a word that this year 2020 is my year of harvest, God knew that there was going to be a pandemic. God knew that COVID-19 was going to shut down the entire world. But he said that he shall supply my needs, my wants, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Not subject to any lockdown. Not subject to any partial easing of lockdown. Not subject to shutting down the whole world. The whole world might be shut down, but God is not shut down. I said the whole world might be shut down, but the power of God is not shut down. The whole world might be shut down, but the word of God is not shut down. And that word has gone over your life that this year is your year. It is your year to get married. It is your year to build a house. It is your year to buy land. It is your year to have children. It is your year to explode in every direction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It does not matter what anybody is saying. God has spoken the word. He said the word has gone forth out of his mouth. He says he will not alter the word that has left his lips. He said the word will not return well to him. Regardless, even if the entire world remains shut down to the end of the year, if God said this year you are going to become a mortal billionaire, it will happen. I said it will happen. I said it will happen. I said it will happen. You will not die the death of an unknown soldier in Jesus' mighty name. The people heard that God has blessed for their dead They will hear that God has blessed you. I said they will hear that God has blessed you. I said they will hear that God has blessed you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis 5, we read the history of those who lived very, very long. And the Bible will record, and this one lived this number of years, and that one lived this number of years. When you read that Genesis chapter 5, maybe the only two names that will stand out for most of us are Methuselah and Enoch. Yet there were so many other people listed in Genesis and they lived extremely long. Yet, most people will only remember Methuselah and Enoch. 
all the others are unknown. I say you will not remain unknown in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say you will not remain unknown in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Jacob had 12 sons and a daughter. For most people, they don't even know that Jacob had a daughter called uh, Dina. So Jacob had 12 sons and he had a daughter called Dina. Maybe you remember the name of Joseph. You remember maybe Judah. Maybe Benjamin. Except maybe you are a student of the Bible. You remember all the others. Simeon, Reuben, Levi, and all that. But for most people, the ones that they really remember, Judah, Joseph, Benjamin. The rest, as it were, unknown. In your father's house, in your mother's house, they don't know you. Change has come now in the name of Jesus Christ. I said change has come now in the name of Jesus Christ. I said change has come now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere that you have gone to hit at and they said, who is that? Because they don't know you. You will go back there again from now on and the doors will be opened unto you. The doors of help and assistance will be opened unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When God has sent a prophet somewhere to the house of Jesse to go and anoint one of his sons, he wasn't giving the name of the person who was going to anoint. He just said, take the oil and go to the house of Jesse. And when you get there, I will show you what to do. Let's read first Samuel chapter 16, verse 5 to 11. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 5 to 11. And he said, Peace be, am I come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that they looked unto Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. Because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on, on, on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh unto the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him to pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen this. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children, and he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. Samuel said unto Jesse, Send, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come. We will not sit down till he come. Seven people, seven sons before David. How many of us know the names of these ones that are listed where right now? Eliab, Shama, Abinadab. For most people, it's of no consequence. And that's the way the world sees a lot of people. They have no consequence. I declare and I speak concerning your life this evening. From today now, the sons and daughters of men will begin to have the gap for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When they are numbering and counting people, they will count you amongst them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When you read the story of the feeding of the thousands, where Jesus fed the 4,000 men, not counting men and women, and fed the 5,000 men, not counting men and women. Something is very, very instructive there. So, there were men, there were women, there were children, and some of these men came with their wives and their children. Yet when they counted people, the Bible says they counted 4,000 men and 5,000 women. They didn't bother 4,000 men in one story and 5,000 men in another story. And they did not bother to number or find out how many women and children were there. And that's the story of the life of so many people. Oh, how many people came to the meeting? Five people. And they said, but I thought I saw more than five people. I saw like 20. Ah, there's only five people that matter. That can all the others, they don't matter. You will matter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
I said you will matter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said you will matter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From now on, you begin to matter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone said nobody will sit down until David comes. So they want to hold a gathering in your father's house. They want to hold a gathering in your mother's house. Your father's children have gathered. Your mother's children have gathered. But they said the meeting will not commence until you get there. And that's when God has made your name great. When God makes your name great, the meeting will not take place until you get there. Even if the meeting takes place, when you get there, they will start the meeting again. Because without you, they can't take any decision. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Second Samuel, verses 5 to 30. Second Samuel, verses 5 to 30. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem after he was come from Hebron. And there were yet sons and daughters born to David. So, when you read the Bible, when he became king in Judah and became king in Israel, the Bible says, and these were the wives of David, Bathsheba, she who used to be the wife of Uriah, Abigail, she used to be the wife of Nabal, and mentioned them. But here and now, we are told that he had many concubines and wives. They were anonymous. When Absalom drove David from the throne, the Bible says uh, Absalom sought uh, counsel from Ahithophel on what to do, and he was giving counsel. And he took all these concubines and wives and took them to the roof of the house and slept with them before the whole of Israel. When David came back, the Bible says, he did not drive them away from the palace, but he no longer had anything to do with them. They no longer mattered. Yet, he had wives that mattered to him. Wives whose names are listed when they are listing the family of David. When they are listing the fa your, your father's children, your name will be included in Jesus' name. When they are listing your mother's children, I say you will, no long, you will not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Your name will not be found missing in Jesus' mighty name. 1 Kings 11, verses 1 to 3. 1 Kings 11, verses 1 to 3. But King David loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they shall turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon claimed unto this in law, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. So a total of 1,000 women. A total of 1,000 women. And the Bible says here now that uh, many of these women were royalty in their own right. They were not royalty because they married David. No, they were already royalty before they came into the life of David. Their fathers were kings from other nations. So in those other nations, uh, they were not anonymous. They were royalty. But here and now, when they are being listed in the life of Solomon, not David, sorry, in the life of Solomon, their names are not listed at all. 1,000 women unknown. Maybe when we get to heaven, they'll be introducing themselves if they are there. Oh, you don't know me. Oh, I'm one of the 1,000 wives and couple wives or so. I said, ah, I didn't see your name inside the Bible. Uh, don't worry about that. Now I will introduce myself to you. May you not be anonymous in Jesus' mighty name. I said, may you not be anonymous in Jesus' mighty name. Second Chronicles, chapter 11, verses 18 to 23. Second Chronicles, chapter 11, verses 18 to 23. He's talking about uh, the son of Solomon. Rehoboam took him Mahalat, the daughter of Jerimoth, the son of David, to wife, and Adihel, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, which bear him children, Jehush and Shamariah and Zaham. And after he took Machal, the daughter of Absalom, which bear him Abijah and Atai and Ziza and Shilomith, 
and Rehoboam loved Maka, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines. For he took eighteen wives and three score concubines, so eighteen wives and sixty mistresses, and begat twenty and eight sons and three score daughters, so twenty eight sons and sixty daughters. And Rehoboam made Abijah, the son of Maka the chief, to be ruler among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. And he dealt wisely and dispersed all of his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin unto every fenced city. And he gave them victual in abundance, and he desired many wives. So here now, we see the story of Rehoboam. He had uh, 18 wives and 60 mistresses. But the Bible says, out of these 78, yeah, out of these 78 women, one of them was special. And the woman is called Maka, the daughter of Absalom. One of them was special. And because she was special to Rehoboam, he picked one of her sons to make that son king. When he was no longer king, his desire, his plan was that boy or that man will take over from him. So out of seven, out of seventy-eight women, one was there to him. There are many women who want to be mistresses and concubines. So you can see the story of the life of a mistress or a concubine. It's just a life of anonymity. A life of nobody knows you. Hagar had a son for Abraham, but Hagar was not the madam of the house. On two different occasions, Hagar was driven from that house. The first time she was driven, she was uh, told to return back. The second time, she was driven away again. Uh, Sarah told Abraham, this woman must leave. And he drove her away. So, you can have children for a man. It's really of no consequence. Anybody can have children from anybody, for anybody. The issue is, what space do you occupy in that man's heart? Are you dear to his heart? The fact that you have children for him doesn't mean that you are dear to him. In the story of the 12 original apostles of Jesus Christ, when Judas had uh, lost his bishopric, as Acts says, and then they gathered in the upper room and took a decision to find a replacement for him. And the Bible says that uh, they cast lots. They cast lots. Let's read Acts 1, verses 21 to 26. Acts chapter 1, verses 21 to 26. Wherefore of these men which have complained with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until that day that he was taken off from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? And they appointed to Joseph called Basabas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, Show whether, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he might take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered among uh, the eleven apostles. They chose Matthias, but God did not choose Matthias. The person that God was going to peak was still known as Saul of Tarsus. Man might pick you. If God does not pick you, it's a waste of time. The Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch in vain. These 11 apostles called a meeting and made a choice. They brought two men. Joseph called Basabas, who they called Justus, and the other man, Matthias. Other than here now, 
You won't likely come across their name anywhere else in the Bible. And other than in this place where I read now, we didn't hear of both Justus or Matthias doing anything of note. You are listening this evening. My prayer for you is that God will begin to announce you from this evening in Jesus' mighty name. God will begin to announce you from this evening in Jesus' mighty name. So we see people bearing biblical names. Abraham, David, Solomon, Paul, John, Joseph. How many people have come across somebody bearing the name Esau? Yet Esau is a son of uh, Isaac. How many of us have met somebody bearing the name Esau? Other than maybe if you go to Israel or among Jews, where it's just a name like Funke or Kemi or Chukuma. You will even come across people bearing the name Lazarus. At least I've come across people bearing the name Lazarus, but I've not uh, come across anybody bearing Esau. Why? Because that name is associated with infamy. So, there are two names now, Judah and Judas. Judah and Judas. So, you hear people, if I have a friend who named his uh, last son Judah, meaning priest. So, Judah is one of the sons of Israel. But you will hardly come across somebody calling his son Judas because that name is associated with Judas is carried. Yet the two names are the same. Judah is the Jewish uh, name, while Judas is the Greek form of it. So a man will name his son Judah. They say, Why don't you call your son Judah? I say, No, 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 I can't call my son Judas. No. But it's the same name. In fact, in, 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 in another place, it's translated as Jude. So, Judah, Judas, Jude is the same thing. So, uh, when, we were in, uh, when I was in the university, I, had, uh, I knew somebody whose name was uh, Jude. Jude. So, they give people the name Judah. They jump Judas and go to Jude. But those three names are the same thing. Those three names. So, Judah is the Hebrew. Judas is the Greek. But they will not want to call their son Judas. Because they feel that uh, negativity goes with it. I pray for you this evening. You are unknown spiritually. The devil said, Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? You are unknown professionally. God will change your story in Jesus' name. You are unknown financially. God will change your story in Jesus' name. You are known when they are counting material, substance, and abundance. God will change your story in Jesus' name. Whatever situation or circumstance that you have found yourself that is unpalatable, that is unpleasant, I say receive a change now in Jesus' mighty name. But the greatest change that a person can receive is to be born again, to accept Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. You are listening to this broadcast this evening, Wednesday, 27th day of uh, May, year 2020. You do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not born again. You are not saved. I'd like to extend the invitation to you. Accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, where you are listening to this broadcast, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I invite you to my heart. I hand over the totality of my life to you. I renounce every work of sin. I renounce every work of unrighteousness. I renounce every work of ungodliness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wash me in your blood. Sanctify me with that blood. Purify me with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of remembrance. On that day, let me not be found wanting. I pray that the Lord will establish you in faith in Jesus' mighty name. 
Those of us who are already born again, I pray that the Lord will continue and see you through to the end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not backslide. You will not go back onto perdition in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once again, this is the Our Triumph broadcast of Adonai Covenant Christian Center. We are based in the Koyi, Lagos, Nigeria. For now, because of the COVID-19 lockdown, we stream, uh, we broadcast the messages Sundays 9 a.m. and Wednesdays 6 p.m. But normally we meet Sundays 9 a.m. and Wednesdays 6 p.m. The worship venue is at uh, number 10, Ikoya Venue, Ikoya, Lagos, Nigeria. Ikoya Venue is off McPherson and McPherson runs between Bodylong Road and Queens Drive. I pray that you have been blessed and God will continue to keep you safe, you and your household, in Jesus' mighty name.